Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time Yay. with both of us um, here at, uh, I'm Dr. Smith of course um, from Accomplish Health and Wellness and this is Heather Fiore from Free State Nutrition and it's been a couple of weeks. It has, yes. Did you have fun on your trip? I did, yeah, we had a good time. There was a lot of, there was a lot of driving. Um, yeah. We clocked 57 hours of driving. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of yeah. driving. But, uh, I saw some yeah. of your videos that you were doing. Yeah, I figured good. I'm in the car, I might as I well do something, uh, right? do something productive. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, um, so today, we are doing Sweet Tangerine. Mm -hmm. We need some energy because school's starting this week, and you know that's crazy. Indeed. So I like these um, Yogi brands. There it is. Yogi. Mm -hmm. I like them because they have these little saying things. And so um, mine says, every beat of your heart is a rhythm of your soul. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. If you do anything out of sheer compassion, you will never be wrong. Oh, that's good. That is nice. Yeah, it's a nice little reminder. Yeah, so I got out the, well, I meant to get out the picnic mugs. Yes, that one's here. So mine, <laughs> okay, well, Christmas. <laughs> mine is the Christmas picnic mug. So oh, it's stripy. I'm ready for the cold weather to come because <laughs> I hate this hot, hot heat. <laughs> Anyways, this one I like. So today, right, we are going to be talking about diabetes. That's um, right. The nutrition side of diabetes, mm. right? Yes. So, um, I just thought maybe I would mention how do we diagnose diabetes? That's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. um, so, there's two different types of diabetes. There's type yes. 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And then there's actually like a subcategory of mm -hmm. the type 2 diabetes. There's, well, there's adult onset type 1 as well because usually you'll get that when you're younger mm -hmm. but there's also adult onset type 1 so there's another type of type 1 yeah but then type 2 there is um, type 2 that is um, non-insulin dependent and type 2 that's insulin dependent sorry I had a brain part. Um, but then you know what we're actually getting is um, now we're getting kids with type 2 yes it's so weird. there's gonna be a, a third category that is Child onset type two or right. adolescent onset type two. Yeah, I don't know if they're um, calling out that, but you know. But what I bet you they will. But there's also like, I don't know if they call it type one and a half or like mm. one and two because I used to work in a children's diabetes center and we would have kids that had type one, but then as they entered adolescence, they're they got some. insulin resistant and now oh. they've got some elements of type two. Oh, yeah. so would they get? Like they get some metformin and they would have like really high insulin um, requirements because of their insulin. Wait, resistance. so they would be diagnosed with type 1? Mm hmm. They would have type 1. Like they need insulin. Right. But then as they enter adolescence, you know, maybe they're. Um, they're getting metabolic syndrome. Yeah. So they're getting. Oh, interesting. Insulin resistance on top of their type so 1. So they're like type 1 slash metabolic. Um, so, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, diabetes. You know, you know what that shows. We don't know the full story. We don't. We always think guessing. that it's an insulin mm -hmm. issue, but it might not even be an insulin issue. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. it's a sugar storage issue. You know? Yeah. You can only beat a wall so hard before it like. Well, you know, if you beat a cinder block oh. wall with your hand, it never crumbles. So. <laughs> break your enough. hand. Um, right. But. You know, if you're like have so much sugar all the time, mm -hmm. and then you can't store it anymore, it's troubles, troubles, troubles. So how do we diagnose? So um, type one is well, type one is funny. A lot of times, type one happens after a virus, um, and the thought behind that is that your body's fighting a virus, and then it's presenting antigen to the antibodies, so antigen is like the proteins, like these little arms that the um, white blood cells will go around and present, right? And um, to and so it'll, the antigen is the protein from the, whatever it broke down, the virus, right? So it pre presents these antigens for the white blood cells to come and mount their immune response and create antibodies too. 
And the thought is that maybe there is um, antibody production to your pancreas because the proteins look similar. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's what's being produced, and then it bites your pancreas, and then you can't all of a sudden have insulin. Right, right. And we've seen like there's kind of like a stepwise, um, you know, decrease in the insulin production for these kids with type one. Like they get these viruses, and they yeah. get less and less until the the it's, you know straw that breaks the camel's back is yeah. this one last. Time they get and sick and like left. yeah nothing left and then they're in DK. Yeah, that's scary. Mm -hmm. It is. So um, type one is kind of an interesting booger, but um, type two is the one that, and you can be insulin dependent or you can be insulin non non insulin dependent with type two. Type two tends to be people that are overweight. And that tends to run in families. And it's really, honestly, it's because you eat the way that you grow up eating, you know, unless you learn something different. Um, and so when you're overweight, you're, you tend to be taking in more carbs. And those carbs get converted and broken down into sugars. And then you become insulin resistant and you, you know, it's not working anymore. And you need medicine. There's lots of medicines. A lot of times type two we are um, non-insulin dependent first, mm -hmm. and then they'll at most type twos, and I tell all my patients this, if you're a type two diabetic, by the time you die, you will most likely be insulin dependent. Right, yes. Because, I think that's a really important thing to tell people. Yes, it's, it's a progressive disease. It is, and people are like, I'm good as long as I'm not on that insulin. Mm -hmm. It's like got this bad reputation. Right, like you're a failure. Yeah, you know, but yeah. that's just progression of your disease. So mm -hmm. the main goal is to keep the progression from going. You know, we right, want to halt it mm -hmm. or we want to, you can actually like, if people that are caught early, you know, if they're caught early and they make lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. a lot of times you're still diabetic. Okay? <laughs> You're not all of a sudden not diabetic. Right. And if you want to say, I'm not diabetic anymore, then you have to say, I have a predisposition to diabetes. Right. Because just because you're not on medicine anymore does not mean that your lifestyle modification is not treating your diabetes. Okay? That's a very good point. And you still have it because you had it. Mm -hmm. You just treated it. So there, I hear that a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not. You know what I love is when people go, "I got that sugar diabetes." <laughs> what other kind is there? I'm not sure. Yep. Yep. I heard that one. Sugar diabetes. I love it. <laughs> okay. So how do we diagnose diabetes? Um, a lot of people are always asking me about like the A1C. What's my A1C? We don't diagnose with A1Cs. We follow with A1Cs. Right. We don't diagnose with A1Cs. So um, a fasting blood sugar of greater than 126 is considered diabetic. Or um, a two random blood sugars greater than 200. Random. Random means it's not fasting. It's just a random in the day. Okay? So fasting is nothing to eat for eight hours. So like a morning blood sugar of 126 or two randoms of 200 or more, then you're diabetic. We say that um, if your A1C is greater than 6.5, then you're most likely diabetic, but then we would start doing those other sugar tests. Yeah. And there's a few other ones. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do like a two hour glucose tolerance test and things like that. Um, so anyways, now we know. How to diagnose it, mm -hmm. um, and then we use our A1Cs to follow, right? right? So um, when you're first diagnosed, you want your A1C less than six point six point five, but don't hold on to that number, okay? People, as you get older, we do not want your A1Cs that low. So um, if you have had long-standing disease and um, any advanced complications, we want it less than eight. Um, and for anyone that has like a um, short life expectancy, it's less than 8.5. So we don't really, 
have to keep them really strict. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that as you get older, you get more predisposed to, I mean, your metabolism is different. Everything is different. How you're going to metabolism metabolize the medicine is different. And you get more predisposed to hypoglycemic episodes. And those are actually even more dangerous than having the higher ones. But in kids, we want 7.5, less than 7. So now you know. So I get this all the time. What, how many carbs do I need? Right. What am I supposed to say? Well, there, there is a range, of course, right? Because if you're like a, you know, 100-pound woman or a 200-pound man you know, or 300-pound man, like you're going to have different needs. But Are like, you? let's just say like on average, okay, um, 30, no, 45 to 60 grams of carb at a meal. 35. No, 40. No, 45. 45 to 65. Okay. At a meal. Got it. Okay. And then you might have, you might have carbs at every meal? Gym. At any meal. Yeah. Like three meals a day of okay. 45 to 60 grams. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously those are averages. Um, and of course, if you're on insulin, depending on the type of insulin you're on, that might dictate things. Right. Sometimes we use the old school insulin where you actually have to match your carbohydrate with your insulin instead of sure. the other way around. Okay. Um, but so that's kind of, you know, what I roughly tell people. And you might have some carbs in between too, depending. Like you might have, um, you might keep your snacks under 10 grams of carb, or you might, you know, intentionally eat 15 or 30 grams of carb, depending on, you know, like if you're active, right? If you're right. if you're exercising you're or you're like walk. going for a hike or something, like you're gonna need some carbs. Right. So um, so we don't want you to pass out. Right. It really it just yeah. absolutely varies. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously like none of this applies to adolescents, right? Like No, this is for adults. This is like a whole different ball game over there because oh, yeah. they eat a lot of food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> they're eating, they're not eating those sixty grams of carb. No. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. yeah. So that's like in a minute. Right. I'm hungry again. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so 45 to 65 grams of carbs with meals, and then mm -hmm. snacks are somewhere 10, Could 20, be like 30, yeah, depending on what you're doing. Zero to 30, depending on okay. your, yeah, what you need. So then um, when they're, what do you think is like a good carb versus like maybe a not, when we're talking about these carbs that we want we right. want them to be good carbs yeah so. i mean all your carbohydrates whether it's whole wheat bread or it's a candy bar like everything is broken down into sugar and enters your bloodstream right mm -hmm. but the difference is the rate at which that happens sure um which has to do with like you know how much fiber is in there how much fiber and whether it's processed or not you know because sure. you can take you know white bread and put some like inulin fiber in there and then you've got more fiber, but does that work as good as like whole wheat bread or sure. something less processed? Like the whole I don't think so. So less processed, more fiber means it's going to take, take a little longer bit longer to, to enter the bloodstream. And Plus it'll take longer to break down. Break down, right. The whole process just takes a little bit longer. And so that is good news for people who are insulin resistant, which is typically people with diabetes, because then the insulin has a chance of actually working. Right. Because the sugar is just sort of kind of dripping into the blood instead of like, you know, bam. you drink a soda and bam, you know, five it's minutes there. later, it's all in the bloodstream oh, right. and yeah, the insulin is overwhelmed and it's got no chance of getting that sugar out of there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so th that's your, your best um, carbohydrate is, you know, something that's um, less, you know, not processed and has some fiber to it. So it could be whole grains, but it's also fruit. Like fruit gets a bad rap in diabetes. It does. It really does. Everyone is always like, oh, I can't eat that fruit because yeah, I have the diabetes. It's no good for me. But is that true? It is not. People can, you can eat fruit. You can eat fruit. You should eat fruit. Fruit is good. And it has fiber. Now, if you're going to drink a glass of orange juice that's like okay, 16 that's ounces, you might as well drink the soda. It's no different right. to your bloodstream. But if you eat an actual orange and it's got fiber in it, it's going to slow down. It's not going to enter the bloodstream right away. And so that um, does not hold true for the orange juice with pulp. Okay. 
It's not like eating an orange. No, no. Even though it goes down like you're eating an orange. <laughs> We're talking a real orange. An actual orange and you peel it and you got to work for it. Yes. You got to work for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and also bananas and also grapes, yeah. like all these apples, fruits, they apples, they do. Yeah. Yes. But it's okay to eat them. You should eat them. Because they're good and they have high fiber and other mm -hmm. vitamins and minerals yeah. and nutrients. All the good stuff that your body needs for yeah. sure. Yes. And that, that carbohydrate is, is not bad. You need to eat carbohydrate and it should come from whole grains. It should come from fruits. It should come from, you know, dairy. Yes. So. Um, what do you think on starchy vegetables? Because... I was on the American Diabetes Association website, and mm -hmm. they have this great website with tons of information. Yes, um, and they have these, actually, this diabetes superfoods. And these are like foods that are good for diabetes. And so it says oh, yeah. beans, dark green leafy vegetables, yes. citrus fruit, like okay. you said, mm -hmm. sweet potatoes. I like sweet potatoes, but I thought they kind of were in that starchy food combo right or, they're similar to potatoes but right to me like it's the same it's just got extra vitamin a in it so it's the same may, as a potato, but that, when you eat the skin you've got the fiber do people eat the skin i do like there's really yeah. i've never done that i should try i should try it. like eat it like an actual like a baked potato like a baked sweet potato yeah okay i'm gonna do see i grew up like see this is what i'm talking about you eat like how your parents eat right yeah, you so my mom always just like cooked them in the oven then you split them up open you put some like cinnamon and sugar mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. some butter mix it all up and then you eat the pulp yeah stuff. but you're saying I, I should eat the whole thing I will I'm saying berries is on this list yes tomatoes fish of course nuts whole grains milk and yogurt and that's it mm -hmm. do you agree with that list I do okay. I do and the thing that's cool about berries is that like you know serving of blueberries is a cup so like you take grapes and a serving is only like 15 grapes hmm. but a cup of blueberries has the same amount of carbohydrate oh. I'm like that's a ton that's of blueberries lot. right yeah, i mean it's besides it's expensive but you know <laughs> barring that so you know if you're counting your carbohydrates which is great because then it's just like checking your blood sugar it's information so right. you can decide you know, it's like living on a on a budget. You've got a carbohydrate budget and you decide like, well, I, you know, I really want to eat some cake or ice cream or something. And you allow for it in, in your, your carbohydrate carb bud budget. Yeah, you, you know, it's. But your cake piece has to be normal. Well, right. I mean, you have to, if you're counting carbs, you can't just call any old piece of, you know, cake the same amount. Cake piece. Um, it's um, a cupcake. That's 15 grams. Do you know, so. um, I have, I like cupcakes better than cake because it's like my own personal little cake. Mm -hmm. That's why I like them. Um, plus like, it's like, this is all I'm going to eat. Right. It's all like portioned out. So yeah. a cupcake is 15 grams. 15 so grams. if you're going to eat the cupcake, right. you have to take 15 grams off of what you were eating before. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, right. people. Yeah. And then you got another 15 if you're going to have frosting on top. Oh, geez. Then you, you <laughs> then you can't eat your carb at dinner, um, and you just get to eat your protein and your fat, and then your cupcake is your carb. Perhaps. Well, if you're going to have, you know, 45 to 60, you still have Unless you're going to exercise. Right. Then you can eat the cupcake. But you got to add on the exercise. So there's more ways than treating diabetes than medicine, right? I, I mean, hopefully that's where you start. Is you lifestyle start with modification. Your lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. So... You need to be exercising. Um, do you know that they say that when you have high blood pressure and diabetes, if you can lose 10% of your weight, 10%. So someone who is 300 pounds, that would be 30 pounds. That really isn't a daunting number, mm -hmm. 30 pounds. That is enough to bring your blood sugar and your um, blood pressure down towards normal ranges. Sometimes it's enough to bring it down into normal ranges, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's more like 20%. Um, and then you will become back to normal. So if you don't want to take the medicine, you've got to do the work. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, sometimes if your blood sugar is really high, I might start people on medicine and say, this is our weight goal. And, um, and then that will be the goal for you to get off your medicine mm -hmm. too. Um, 
Right. You don't have to stay on the medicine just because no. you start on it. Like, you can still get off of it. No. It's not a done deal. But diabetes, I always tell everyone, diabetes does not kill you today. Right. It's 10 years from now, or 20 years from now, or 30 years from now. And it's not like a, it's the slow killer, right? It yeah. takes your eyesight. Right, one organ at a time. It takes your feet feelings, your hands feelings. It gives you heart attacks. Hey, fellas, are you listening? It takes your erectile function. Yeah. Um, if your, you know, if your blood sugar is high, it's not going to be working anymore. Sorry. Um, it, it it just does all this stuff over a lifetime. Right. Which is why you can't freak out about one high blood sugar. Like, right. You should look at trends and you should pay attention and be on top of it. But don't freak out if like one time you have a high blood sugar. Yeah. You're fine. That's true. Yeah, I don't get a lot of people um, when they get diabetes in the beginning. I find they become obsessed with, but this one was high. Yeah. Well, what did you eat? Right. Like that's why it was high. Now we know that when you eat the pizza or the cake or mm -hmm. the Chinese food, it's gonna be high. Yeah. So now we know that we need to eat less. Right. Of that stuff. Right. Do it less often or figure out how to, you know, your volume, you know, down. your portion size is less or whatever. So, mm -hmm. lifestyle modifications. The other thing is, you know, um, one, not just changing your um, diet, but also your exercise. You need to be exercising. And the recommendation now is um, 30 to 60 minutes most days of the week, mm -hmm. which I know everyone's busy. Everyone's busy. We all have kids. We all have full-time jobs. We're all busy. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do it multiple times during the day. 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there. You know what? You can throw the ball and tell your kid to go get it, and then you can chase them. 10 minutes. That's all you need. Right. Um, you do that with your dog, too. You can. I do that with my dog all the time, but then oh. she looks at me and she's like, why are you chasing the ball, too? No, just kidding. <laughs> But she would. She would, like, beat me to the ball. Right. Um, so, yeah. You'll also increase your speed and endurance. Um, yeah. So it should be fun. Something that fun. feels purposeful at least. Yeah. Fun would be great. Enjoyable would be great, but at least purposeful. Like, yes. And, you know, it's not torture. If yes. it's torture, you got to look for something else. Yeah. And you're not going to stay with it if it's torture. So what is a um, – and, that yeah, you know, I'm not a fan. I used to love the gym. I used to love it. But I just can't get there. Mm -hmm. So I always have to do things that are part of my life. I have to work it into something that I normally am doing. Mm -hmm. Whether that's taking a stress relieving walk or riding a bicycle or, you know, whatever. Something to get me active. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be in the gym. Um, sometimes I just lift my kids and that's like called my weightlifting. <laughs> yeah. I do Wait, bicep curls. <laughs> I teach my son how to do push-ups. There you go. Uh, anyways, um, so what is like some thing, like some simple diet changes that somebody can make right off the bat that are from when you have diagnosed with diabetes? So, and this is the same for if you're at risk for diabetes. Like if your doctor says pre-diabetes, you know, pre-diabetes, yeah. or even if it's just it's in your family and you're yeah. worried, mm -hmm. like these are things that you should look at. That's like that. So pre-diabetes is um, 105 to 125, but I actually always tell people 100 to 125 just because, like, when you're at 100, guess what? You're really close to 105. Yeah. So yeah, not that different. you're moving into that. So In that's pre-diabetes. Yeah. Pre-diabetes. That means that within the next five to ten years, you will have diabetes. Yes. So what can we do at that? So something simple. Right. So when, you know, when you have you're diagnosed or you're at risk and you're pre-diabetes, the very first thing is to look at your drinks, right? That is like- Soda? Yeah, the Gotta lowest go. hanging fruit is your drinks. Yeah. So definitely soda, juice, but juice, anything that has sugar in it. I mean, it might be your coffee if you're right. getting one of those mocha or latte, like, yeah, whatever Every things. single day or twice a day or five times a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I'm not talking about like putting like a little sprinkle of sugar in, I'm talking no. about those like, you know, frappuccino <laughs> things. Yeah, <laughs> the, the tablespoon of sugar in your drink. Yeah, yeah. if it's if it's, it's got a liquid go, candy, sorry. then you know then you gotta do some work on that. Yeah. So you know it doesn't mean like that you should 
that you have to cut out all the sugar in your drinks or that you have to go to diet or, you know, it, there's no one what set way that you have to do it, but you have to make a change. Right. Um, you know, if you're, if you're overdoing any of that stuff, um, you should definitely start there. Cause to me, that's the easiest thing. Like they're not, maybe you need the caffeine, but you're not filling up your stomach. It's you not like you're going to, it's not like you're going to be hungry if you right. cut out your soda or your, whatever. right. Yeah. I, people are like, man, try to take their soda away. I realize that. I, I say are. that like, oh, that's so easy. But I, I'm not saying it's easy. It's it's a simple thing. But for a lot of people, it's not, it's easy. not easy. But there are, you know, there are ways. So, But it's the one of those easy choices. Mm -hmm. It's just difficult to do. It's difficult to do. Right. And it's going to make the biggest impact. Like if you're yeah. drinking a lot of soda, like great news. When you decrease that, you're going to be all set. Yeah, you, you know, might be for normal. a while. Yeah, you can ride that one for a while. Yeah, before you have to do anything else. Yeah, um, you know, so you might decrease the amount. Um, either you go from bottles to cans, so from twenty oh. ounce to twelve ounce. Yeah. Maybe you get them less often during the day. Maybe you switch to diet. Maybe you switch to something else. But you know, you make some sort of progressive change. You don't have to just go, okay, no more. I can't drink soda anymore, and, and then yeah. you're just like. Yeah, that's not gonna work probably. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm not a fan of diet soda. I'm not sure it's a great solution, but it might be no. a stepping stone. It is a stepping right. stone, but the I think the goal should be to get off of the soda altogether. Yeah, but I, uh, it is a stepping stone. Yeah, I don't but, think it's a solution to be drinking a whole bunch of diet soda in your day. I cannot recommend. Did that. you know that dark sodas they're linked to pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer? Ooh. There you go. That should be a, a okay. deterrent. Yeah, nobody wants pancreatic cancer. Pretty sure. Um, but anyways, so that's the one thing. The very first thing is your is your sodas, and then the next thing is looking at like what's the what's one big thing that you could do differently. Like, do you eat really large portions of anything? Like, do you walk away from the table feeling stuffed? Yeah. Do you? Um, like, do you eat a lot of white pasta? You mm -hmm. could switch it over. Right. Or eat less. Or eat less. You can eat less of it. You can eat pasta, but you shouldn't eat a whole no. plate of it. You should eat a you know reasonable portion, and it should be in proportion with vegetables and some protein source. Yes. You know? And so, you can switch from white pasta to wheat pasta. And when you do that, you'll find that you're not eating as much you're because... Not. It has a whole lot more it's fiber more in it, mm -hmm. and so right. you will. You also not get as hungry as quick afterwards. So. Right, right. So it's got that satisfaction, the mm -hmm. fullness factor, and the satisfaction. So yeah. it kind of gets you full the, and then sustain you. The taste is a little bit different, but it's. I think it's easy to get used to. I mean, my mm -hmm. kids are used to so. wheat pasta now, and they don't complain. So and I usually tell people try a couple of brands because yeah, some people like Barilla like, and some people like the store brand or whatever. Yeah. It just varies. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Any, any other good ones? Yeah. So that's um so you look at like, you know, are you eating too often? Like you're eating large meals or your snacks have turned into meals or that the proportions aren't right, like you're not eating any fruits or vegetables in your day, um, or are your meals often out? You know, mm -hmm. if you eat, you know, several times a week out somewhere, even if it's not fast food, if it's fast food, for sure, you should address that. Yeah. But it, even if it's not, that's not the same no. as stuff you would make at home. So if you no. can decrease and the portion that, sizes, right? Have like I read an or article recently that the portion sizes at restaurants have just doubled and tripled, and they're what we used to get when I was little, mm -hmm. and what we get now. That's it's yeah. way different. And how often do you bring it home? Like, you mostly just eat it. Well, you can't, sad. yeah, and you can't bring those salads home because they mm -hmm. get yucky the next day. Right. Some things really don't yeah. translate to. Being but then, is it good to bring your um, mashed potatoes and chicken fingers and eat it a second meal? Yeah. <laughs> Hard to say. Right. Hard to say. So, but you, still, you can work at it by cutting your right. portions. You could like. share. That's a good idea. And then you also somebody. save yourself some money. Yeah. You just both have to agree on what you're eating. Yes, there's that. Yeah. yeah. So there are lots of ways to address even just the eating out issue. Like, can you go out less often? Can you make better choices? Can you go to a different place? Yeah. Can you share? Can you bring some home? Like, there's not one yeah. way that you have to do it. But 
you know, think about making a change because the thing about diabetes is that, you know, your lifestyle has contributed to, you know, the getting it. Yeah, yeah, the disease itself. The other thing that I always tell people is um, if you're trying to work in exercise and stuff, is to um, park as far away as you can mm -hmm. in the sure. parking lot. So you sure. have to walk. My mom, she's like, will you stop doing that? <laughs> Why? She's like, you have three kids now. And I'm like, yeah, now I got more weightlifting than I'm doing the whole way out. Um, the other thing is that you can walk the stairs instead of the mm -hmm, elevator. For sure. When I come out of the grocery store, a lot of times if you see me, um, especially when I have my daughter with me, we actually do um, like dumbbell curls with the bag <laughs> all the way to the car. You can get like oh, 10 dumb dumbbell curls in with that. Yes. That's like way more weight than you would ever do, and it's 10 dumbbell curls all the way to the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways to get stuff in um, little little exercise. That's more than what you were doing before. Right. All, the whole thing is like, yeah, you 30, 60 minutes most days. That's the target. Goal. That's the goal. But like if you just need to start somewhere, start anywhere. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could sit on a ball at work. Sometimes um, I tell people to do that or yeah. get a standing desk or, yeah. you know, there's these things that are sort of like pedals for your feet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. or just a little something or take just breaks. Something. Yes. You know, I think we've talked Get about up that before. Around. Like, yeah. there's people going out for smoke it's breaks. It's an exercise just break. Go walk around. Just say it's your smoke break. Right. Right. And if you live in a building or you work in a building with um, multiple you, floors, you take you can, the stairs. Yeah. yeah. You can bum one cigarette for your smoke break, and you can pick it up and walk out with it, and and you can use that cigarette for the whole rest of your life. <laughs> Has that one yes. cigarette for so your smoke break for so that, that you can go exercise. Yes. You don't even have to smoke it. Got my cigarette. They don't know. Know. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you just put it in your they don't know. Really you smell know. great after all of your smoke breaks. Well, you know, if you didn't work didn't, up you yeah. know, if you're not funky, but <laughs> you won't smell like cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. All right, so um, any other last thoughts? Yeah, only just, you know, think about making progress. Like you're you're turning yes. in towards progress. That's all. You don't yes. need to either do it or not do it. It's like you just right. need to change one you little thing. You can't start at the finish line. Mm. You have to start at the starting line, mm. and you have to... Keep going. And how long did it take you to get where you're at? Right. It didn't happen overnight. No. So you're not going to turn it around overnight. No. The other thing is when you get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, when you're diagnosed, you need to get your eyes checked. Ooh. And the reason voice. is that you have, like she said, you did not get here overnight. And so you may already have some changes in your eyes. Um, so you need to get a formal eye exam at that point. Um, but yes, you're like the turtle. Be the turtle. Mm -hmm. Slow and steady, yeah. right? It always wins race. That's right. Because um, mm -hmm. the rabbit falls asleep. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so what are we going to talk about next time? Oh, gosh. Do um, we even have a, our list? Yes, yeah, so we have our list. Okay, good. Change your topics. So, um, I think it's getting more. We have to add some more things here. Um, maybe what I'm gonna say the fish thing. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. the Geiger counter. <laughs> but um, okay, so we're gonna talk about healthy fish mm -hmm. next time. Yes. Do we need a Geiger counter? We don't know. We'll find out, and you will too next time. Um, so hopefully it'll be on Tuesday, but just so that you know, we might have some schedule changes this yeah, coming next, September, at yeah, least. month, um, just because of things that are happening. Uh, but we'll keep you posted, and you can always still find our um, videos on Facebook, mm -hmm. and also you can um, look search it for both of us on. YouTube because yes, we also have them on YouTube and you can check us out on YouTube and you can subscribe because we yeah. have goals <laughs> for a thousand subscribers. That's, That's what right. we're hoping for. So you can always um, start somewhere. Yes. <laughs> just, 
That's what my daughter said. Yeah. You know, mom, none of those subscribe, none of those big YouTubers, do you think they started out with a thousand? And I said, started no. One. She goes, guess where they started out? Zero. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. inspiring. Yeah, she's giving me a little pep talk. So anyways, <laughs> we're, we are, um, both of us have YouTube pages, but mm -hmm. we put um, our videos on both of our pages. So yeah. feel free. And our websites. Um, and on our websites and on our mm -hmm. Facebook. So um, if you have a question of where all that information is, you can always ask. Um, so like I said, fish next time, if you have any questions on this topic or want more information or you want us to talk about this a little bit more, then um, mm. please, please, please say something and we will do that. Yeah. If you have ideas for future topics also, we add them to our list um, and we need some more for our list. So please help us with that. Um, so anyways, have a good rest of your day. Good luck to all the people going to, all the little yeah. kiddos going to school this week. And we will see you next week. Adios. Mm -hmm.